Oh my god, hey! Welcome, uh, welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Mickey Joe. I am an international theatre critic and I am super allowed to say that today because I am at Heathrow Terminal 3 where I'm about to get on a plane to fly to Sao Paulo, Brazil to go and see Wicked in Brazil. I am uh, still in shock, I am a little bit overwhelmed, but I'm taking you with me. Let's go to Brazil, everyone! Does anyone know any Portuguese? Because I don't. So this might merit just a little bit of explanation. A couple of weeks ago, I had a message from one of the producers of Wicked in Brazil, who simply asked me if I would ever be interested in traveling down there to go and review the show. And I will go anywhere for theater, but flights to Brazil are super long and super expensive, and this is not something I'd ever really looked into. I have a very busy summer, and I didn't really know if I'd have the opportunity. The show was closing super soon, but they were eager to make it work and very kindly offered to fly me down there, put me up in a hotel, and provide the kind of things that would make me more comfortable about making that journey by myself, like a car transfer from the airport to the hotel. So at almost the last minute we managed to find a date that worked, and I decided to say yes and fly down to Brazil, and that is how this whole wild and impossible journey started. I'm gonna be popping up a few more times in this video just to give a little bit more context about some of the stuff that was happening or that I didn't explain super well at the time, but back to my journey to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh my God, hey, I am through security, yay, um, and I'm in a lounge. I'm in a lounge, I'm in an airport lounge. I've been here for like an hour, just over an hour, um, and this is my very first airport lounge experience. Cheers. Cheers to you, tiny people inside my camera. Um, and you're gonna laugh at me. I did not know the food was free and the drinks were free in airport lounges. I did not know. I thought people were paying to get in and then paying for stuff on top of that. I did not know you got like these unlimited mini shortbread biscuits that have, have changed my life. I fear I'm forever changed as a person and I don't know how I will ever travel specifically long haul again without doing this because my God, worth it. If I know one thing in life, it's how to get my money's worth at a buffet. So, this is fine. Mm. Okay, I have a gate, so I am on my way to my gate. I was in the lounge for like a couple of hours, and I will say, life-changing travel experience. My goodness, so worth the price. Um, I mean, very easy for me to justify on this one because I didn't have to pay for the flights, uh, so I just treated myself to a lounge experience for the first time. The food was great. I was at a number one lounges lounge. Um, uh, not like a huge variety of foods, but I liked everything that they had, and they had an unlimited mountain of blueberry mini muffins, which that makes me very happy. That is all I need for a travel experience. Ooh, uh, but yes, going to my gate now. I just dropped on social media a hint that this is where I was going, because I tweeted earlier in the week, I might go see Wicked again. Um, <laughs> that alone, people were like, yay, go see Wicked, amazing. And I was like, yeah. Um, and so I've just quote tweeted that with a picture of my passport being like, oh, you thought I meant London? I didn't, I didn't mean London. Um, and then now, about to get in the plane. What is life? What is life, everybody? I'm approaching the end of the conveyor belt, and I am nowhere near my gate. My goodness, I'm glad I left when I did. I'm gonna go get on a plane now. Okay, I'm a little bit early for my, how early am I? Boarding doesn't even start for another 22 minutes. There we go, that's how early I am. The flight time is not for another hour and 22 minutes. Oh, I just saw a plane go off. Wow, um, yeah early to my gate. Who's shocked? I like to be punctual when it comes to air travel. I don't think that hurts anything. I could have, I probably could and should have stayed in the lounge a little bit longer, but I just would have eaten more mini shortbread biscuits because they were so good. They were so good. Um, and I did not need a third glass of Rosé Prosecco, but I would have drank one. So it is just as well <laughs> that I'm now sat here waiting for my plane to board. I'm also at the back of the plane deliberately because I like to be at the back of planes. I don't know why, I just feel less unease. Even though it does not benefit you in terms of getting on fast or getting off fast. Um, and so I'm probably gonna be the last to board and I'm one of the first people here. But that's fine, that's fine, that's okay because at least I am prepared. There's a massive queue where I am right now for another gate and these people are going to Hong Kong. That's so cool, that's so cool. I haven't even like ever seen a flight. I'm not used to long haul terminals, honestly. So I don't think I've ever seen a flight to Hong Kong before. But another one of those places that in my head I've just always been like, I would never ever go there in my life. Did I ever think I would go to Brazil? No. So, you know, 
here we are. Okay, I'm on a plane. I'm on the plane. Only my second uh, long haul flight in my life. You guys were here for the first one because that was New York. I'm um, not going to vlog too much of this because it's like half nine at night right now. So it's going to be a night flight for the next 11 and a half hours. Pray for Mickey Joe. Uh, but I'm on the plane. I have my little headphones. We've got little screens. Little screens going on. I've got cushions. I've got a blanket. I have everything I need. Um, I have a window seat. I'm happy. This is good. This is good. Um, 11 and a half hours of plane now. I'll see you on the other side. Popular, te ensino a ser popular. Não pode desperdiçar, tem que aproveitar a bênção que a vida te deu. Eu confesso que desejar que o mundo seja meu, seu. Okay, I'm off the plane. I have legally entered Brazil, which took five minutes, by the way. When Aaron and I queued for New York at JFK, it took three hours in the queue. This, with the queue, five minutes. Speedy process in Brazil. Um, I, <laughs> I've been on, uh, I've been sat down in the same spot without standing up for 12 hours. My ears have gone funny. Um, I had some nice breakfast. I didn't have the evening food because, like, I'd eaten in the lounge and it was already like after 10 o'clock when they were bringing it. I was like, I don't need to eat now, just water. Didn't really sleep on the plane, so um, it's meant I'm meant to feel like it's 9 a.m. because it's like half nine ish, I think, now in the UK. It's half five here. It just it, it feels like the middle of the night and no particular time at all because I've been on a plane for 12 hours and people are looking at me very strangely because I'm talking to a camera in the airport but that's fine um, I'm going to leave now and there should be uh, one of those people with a sign with my name on okay just took the car from the airport I didn't film the guy with the sign it was just a piece of paper that said Mickey Joe which was still cool but I didn't want to just like film like arrive filming him and I was too nervous I was too shy to ask like could I film your bit of paper after going and saying hello that is me I was too busy panic googling what hello and that is me were in Portuguese just in case because I've arrived here with staggeringly little Portuguese but that is fine we're going to make do I'm in my hotel now um oh driver who was a separate guy was an adorable man who said welcome to Sao Paulo Mr. Joe because my name was just down as Mickey Joe so that was sweet uh, he said have a lovely weekend in Sao Paulo and now I'm here at the hotel at the Radisson Blue Sao Paulo this is this is my room look at this I'm just I'm happy to see a flat horizontal mattress after 12 hours on a plane um, but yeah not too mad about any of this. I'm considering having a bit of a nap for a couple of hours. Tiredness is kind of coming and going in waves. I nearly fell asleep at one point in the car. I nearly fell asleep editing a review video on the plane uh, a couple hours before we landed. Um, but now I feel like I'm gonna lie down, probably won't be able to fall asleep, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. Oh, hello, you're seeing me in a mirror now. I also wanted to show you plane outfit. First of all, on theme, Wicked top. Um, second of all, see, silly jewellery. That that didn't help me at security. Just one other thing to worry about going through a metal detector. But uh, these are new. I got these from Zara. The trousers. I mean, it's like a smart jogger um, that I need to hoist up a bit. But so comfortable. Basically like wearing pajamas because on an eleven and a half hour flight, what is the most important thing? Comfort. That is the answer. This is Aaron's jacket that I have borrowed and comfortable shoes. So trying to be pseudo stylish, but comfort is key. Comfort is key. Oh my God, hey, you find me in a time of crisis. Well, not really, everything's fine, um, but I have encountered challenges. So I did a, like, the world's briefest Google search uh, in trying to work out what kind of plug adapter I needed to bring, like, minimal investigation was done on my part so that's very much on me so i'm not surprised that this has happened but i was like it looks like this like two prong european adapter should be fine and it's it's, it's not it's, it's not it's not fine so i need to go and buy a different one i brought my extension lead and everything i always travel with an extension lead with usb options because i have just so many electronic devices 
I have a laptop and I want to charge my camera and I want to charge my portable charger and I want to charge my phone and I have a ring light so like there's, there's a lot of stuff I have a lot of stuff headphones I want to charge my headphones um, so yes I'm very blue now because I'm looking at the outside uh, which I will show you momentarily but yes so I've decided I'm gonna go shopping there's a shopping center like 25 minute walk away that opens at 10 a.m. so gonna hit up there and they've got a Zara so I might shop for trousers because I ordered some green trousers from H&M and they got delivered like a couple hours after I had to leave for my flight. I'm fuming uh, and I left it very last minute. So that, again, that's on me. All of this, no, not one part of this is not my fault. Um, but yes, uh, now it's like half eight. Sleep's not really happening for me, even though I can see how tired I look. So I might go down and try the breakfast buffet. Am I hungry again for breakfast? I don't know. At the very least, I might investigate it ahead of tomorrow when I probably will partake of the breakfast buffet. So this is like a pre-buffet browse. It's a pre-breakfast buffet browse. That's what's going to happen right now. And I might ask on the front desk if they know where I can buy a plug adapter with the hope that they will take pity on my sad Britishness and have one that they can provide me with. But I'll, I will, I'll go and buy one uh, if, if that doesn't work. Why am I like this? As promised, this is the view from my balcony, everybody. A lot of similar color buildings. This is as much of Sao Paulo as I can see right now. That's, that's the road. What's going on over there? Hard to say. Is that a, is that a shop? Is that a pharmacy? I don't know. I honestly have no idea. The culture shock is real. Look how long this bus is! Look at that long ass bus! Wow! I'm feeling more like a human being. I went down, I got breakfast. Breakfast buffet, by the way, great. Some exciting things, some unusual things, by my very British uh, understanding of a breakfast buffet, but that's very fun. And unfortunately, the pan au chocolat is extraordinary, and I've already had two this morning, and I fear for what's going to happen to me on this trip because they're really good. There's also so many juices. I may try a different juice every day. These are the fun things I like to do. I love a breakfast buffet, if you couldn't already tell. Um, but yes, came back to the room, had a shower. I've put on sun cream, a face sun cream, and insect repellent. So I'm like 12 different kinds of feeling sticky right now. Oh, and good news on the plug front. Uh, there's this little, little thing I got to pull up here that does have like a universal plug thing in there. So I've plugged my extension lead into that and that seems to be powering all of my devices, which is great news. I'm going to head out and explore. I'm not going to take the camera with me because I only have a little bag and I don't want to just carry a camera around in a city I have never been out in before. So this is my first, I'm going to go and scout around and then I will show you what I find today, tomorrow or later today. Okay, I will come back for you. Do not worry. For now, this is my day one Sao Paulo outfit here. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. I still, if you couldn't tell, I still have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm off to go explore Sao Paulo, Brazil. So on my first day, like I told you, I didn't want to take my camera outside, but I saw that there were a couple of shopping centers and I figured this is where like Sao Paulo is gonna be. I'm gonna go and look around these shopping centers, get a feel for it. And they were great shopping centers, but they didn't really help me identify the center of the city. And it was through this that I realized Sao Paulo was a lot bigger than I had imagined it to be. I've never been to Los Angeles, but this is how I've heard it described, is that you've got a lot of heavily residential areas and everyone has to drive in order to get from one place to the other. It's not a super walkable location like London or Manhattan, at least the theatre district of Manhattan. But I managed to get a bit of a sense of what Sao Paulo was like, lots of telephone wires, lots of low-flying aircraft. I saw a monkey, I saw a tamarind, I think I tell you more about that later on in this video. I saw a lot of stores, some of them familiar, some of them less so. I saw an Applebee's, I saw a Starbucks, and I came to realise I have very little understanding of Portuguese. It's nowhere near as intuitive a language for me to understand as something like French or Spanish. I'd learned this on the flight over that I was really struggling to understand what was being said to me in Portuguese. Because I studied Latin and French and German at school, I can manage those and understand Spanish, which is sort of a relative of that kind of a family of language, but Portuguese is just so different. Anyway, back to the video. Oh my god, hey, I'm back. Wow, my eyes look tired. 
Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, how many hours since I've slept? I, I, again, I don't think I slept whatsoever on the plane necessarily. Uh, it's nine, it's half nine to UK people. So we're approaching like two full days since I last slept, which is why my eyes look like that. I've gone very yellow now. Um, solid day of exploring Sao Paulo. I, being from London, like to walk places. Um, and even when we went to New York, Erin and I both like walking places. And Sao Paulo, not a walkable city, at least the bit that I'm in. Very big, very, very big. Um, uh, there's, to give you an example, there's two theatres, um, uh, the distance between which is two hours walk. Um, there are more than two theatres in the city, but just using those two as an example, uh, two hours walk between those two theatres. So, uh, not walkable. I've learned some other things as well. I went to go and see the theatre where Wicked is going to be. That was hard to find, uh, but I had the intervention of some unexpected help from someone who recognised me, and I'll tell you more of that story uh, when it makes sense to tell you. So I don't know why I told you that I would say this at another point later in the video, but I'll tell you what happened now. Basically, I was walking around lost looking for this theatre. It looks nothing like a theatre from the outside, and I managed to miss the one sign indicating which way I should go, but I must have looked A, so lost, and B, so pale, that someone actually came up to me and said, sorry, are you Mickey? And in that moment, I should have been utterly shocked that someone was recognizing me in Sao Paulo, Brazil, but I was just so glad that someone was potentially gonna help me find out where I was, that the shock took a back seat to me going, oh, thank goodness, yes, please help me. And it turns out that he was attached to the show, he knew I was coming, and so that's where the recognition comes from. But also, I was just very clearly a lost tourist walking around looking for Wicked. Anyway, Back to the video. You will get to see tomorrow night when I go see Wicked and take you with me. You'll get to see what that looks like. I don't want to spend too much longer talking here because this is not the fun part of the video for you. You want to see Sao Paulo as well. I didn't take you with me today, um, but had a good day exploring. Um, and I'm about to go live on YouTube to tell all of you where I am because I haven't officially said anything or said the word Brazil yet. I've kind of teased the idea that I'm seeing Wicked, but not in the place you might expect me to be seeing Wicked. Um, but I haven't officially said anything yet. I think a lot of people have put it together and I've not, it, it, it's not a big secret, but I'm about to do a YouTube live and share the good news. Somebody asked, how did this all come about? And I was aware of the production. I was like, wow, that looks really cool. I, obviously I won't get to go there because it's Brazil. And one of the producers of Wicked in Brazil uh, reached out to me and evidently has seen my videos and invited me to come and see the show or asked if I would have any interest in seeing the show in Brazil. That is why I am in Brazil. And it all came together pretty recently. This was all confirmed less than a week ago, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm in Brazil. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it honestly, because I have not had very long to prepare. I started trying to do Duolingo Portuguese a week ago, but then Erin and I were in Paris last weekend at Disney, and I was like trying to learn Portuguese, trying to speak French, and it was it was too much. So the Duolingo owl is very mad at me because I've been neglecting my Portuguese. Yeah, I only remembered the producer's connection to Brazil yesterday. Uh, well done. Good musical trivia, Dan John, for pointing that out. Let's hop a plane and really go insane in Rio by the sea. This is absolutely the furthest I've ever flown, Isaac, because before this it was New York, and before that it was, like, Croatia. Okay, YouTube Live done. My brain is melting just talking by myself and answering questions, having been awake now for 38 hours. I don't know. I've lost count. It's probably best I don't keep counting. Um, I'm going to get changed into an evening ensemble because uh, I'm going to go and meet the producer that I've been corresponding with uh, for a drink uh, to go and meet in person and say thank you for flying me to Brazil um, and see a little bit more of Sao Paulo. And here it is. Ba-bam. 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 <laughs> move this ironing board that I got up so I can iron my shirt for Wicked tomorrow. Ba-bam. Ba-bam. This is the outfit, the evening outfit for drinks in Sao Paulo. This is the look. I'm gonna call an Uber now because as I mentioned before, Sao Paulo, not walkable. So Uber, oh I need glasses.
Oh my god, breakfast buffet. Another day, another trip to the breakfast buffet. I'm gonna tell you what everything is. There's some new stuff from yesterday. This is uh, described as sausages in like a tomato sauce, but it's like a hot dog kind of a sausage. Simply potatoes. We've got scrambled egg with little bits of like ham going on. This is cheese bread. It's amazing and apparently gluten free. I don't know if I can smuggle any back in my suitcase. This, oh, I literally just read it and I was gonna tell you. I will tell you in the next video, but excited for all of this goodness. Yay, Brazilian food. And then round two, biblically good pan au chocolat. This is a guava pastry, which is a new concept to me. They do have uh, croissants as well. I had it yesterday, it was a bit bready. So I've not gone for another one of those. This is a red velvet brownie. This is new today. I'm very excited. I've forgotten what this is. This is a queadinha sim gluten. Uh, which I believe means it's a little gluten-free cake that I wanted to try and I will report back to Aaron. This didn't have a label, but I'm thinking it's like lemony. I don't know. We're gonna try it. We're gonna find out. <laughs> oh my god, hey. It is a new day here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Just went to have breakfast buffet. Um, the meat, I couldn't remember the name of, Calabresa. And um, the desserts I didn't know about. I still couldn't find a little label for the little fluffy one with the chocolate on top. But I think... The bigger piece of cake was a big version of the, what did I call it, like a queadinha? The little gluten-free thing? I think the small one was a gluten-free version because they both had desiccated coconut on the top, which FYI rules them out for Aaron James in any case because he is an enemy of the desiccated coconut, which is fine. I enjoyed them. Everything tasted great. Uh, particular breakfast buffet highlights have been the pan au chocolat. Um, I enjoy the hot dog sausages. I, uh, the cheese bread life-changing. I need to know if there's a place I can get that in the UK because I'm, I'm not ready to be in a place that doesn't have the cheese bread. It's so good, so good. I also tried caparinhas last night, cocktail, Brazilian cocktail. Delicious, kind of just like a slightly more alcoholic and more dangerous Pims, <laughs> which is <laughs> probably a cultural bastardization, but they're really nice and I enjoyed them. It's cocktail with fruit and easy way to my heart. I would like to introduce you to my favorite chair, this chair is, I can't get this whole chair in the frame. This chair is huge. I'm lounging in this chair because it's enormous. Um, so I'm seeing Wicked tonight. That's happening today. Today is the day I see Wicked. I was getting drinks with the producers last night, which was a lot of fun. They're really nice. I got to thank them for flying me here to Brazil. I got to chat to them about what Brazilian audiences are like, how that compares with London, how that compares with New York, the role of the critic in Brazil, which was really interesting. And to hear kind of like how they came to produce this show and their aims with it as one of the first few non-replica productions because Hamburg had done one and now they're doing one. There's one in Sweden coming soon. And it's a real privilege as a critic to be able to have those conversations because so often you make judgments or you make commentary on like a production's aims or its intentions that you try and infer. You can read the notes in the program, you can go to press launches, but getting to actually sit down with the producers gives you so much insight as to what it is they're trying to achieve against which you can measure your interpretation of the show to then determine success. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but like I said, I'm seeing the show tonight. I might walk over there again this afternoon so I can show you what the theater looks like. There is merchandise. I figured this out that they do have merchandise. I managed to do a little bit of a pre-browse online, but I figure I will take you out with me today and show you some of the things I saw yesterday in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Getting ready to venture outside, this time taking you with me. Come and see Sao Paulo with me. Um, uh, I was in Lush the other day, looking for a new cleanser and toner, and got given this little sample for Million Dollar Sun Cream, uh, which is a nice little face sun cream that I used yesterday, even though people keep telling me it's Brazilian winter. It's 25 degrees with no clouds. This is not winter. I don't know why people are wearing coats. Because this is summer, my friend. And the last thing I want is to get sunburn on my face again. Because I got sunburned at West End Live. Um, but this seems to be a really great product. There you go. Show the gloop, focus on the gloop. There you go, there you go. You can tell I'm not a beauty influencer. But uh, I'm gonna get a big one of these when I get back to British soil, because like, I don't feel like you can tell I'm wearing, if I put like, if I put this sun cream all over my face, I'll just look like the Tin Man in an amateur production of The Wizard of Oz, and I don't want that for my Brazilian experience. That doesn't make sense with my Brazilian fantasy. So, 
there you go. I've not put anything in my hair yet because I'm gonna come back here and get ready properly before Wicked, which is the main event of the day. I'm just killing time, doing other little bits and pieces, doing some work. There's a video exporting right now. Um, we're gonna go explore Sao Paulo. Let me show you what I found yesterday. I'll see if I can find any more monkeys. Oh my God, hey. Welcome to Sao Paulo, everybody. You're outdoors with me. I found this park yesterday. It's kind of in between where my hotel is and where the theater is. Um, New York people, or people who've been to New York, the skyline behind the trees. This is not the biggest park in Sao Paulo. This is not like their equivalent of Central Park. I have been told that they have another one that's more like that. But the skyline poking above the trees, especially the pointy one somewhere over there, uh, it very much reminds me of the southernmost bit of Central Park in Manhattan and seeing like the Plaza Hotel. I would describe Sao Paulo as a city as being a bit Manhattan-esque, just with more trees. Lots more trees. Um, but yeah, enjoying another one of those classic Brazilian winters today. Spoiler alert, it's lovely. Lots of people out jogging, basking in the sunshine. I saw a monkey in this park yesterday, which I'm told is still actually pretty rare. But if I see another one, and I will be on the lookout, uh, then I will show you. It scared the life out of me because I thought it was a bird. It was as I was leaving the park, it was on the fence. I was like, oh, there's a bird over there. And then as I turned to look at it, it jumped further towards me along the fence. And it was a monkey, like a little like, I don't know if it's like a tamarind. It was kind of like somewhere between a monkey and a lemur. But little, little creature. This is basically what I was talking about here with the skyline over the park. Very Manhattan-esque, but it's not. It's Sao Paulo, Brazil. If I haven't said that enough times. These are the things I was talking about at breakfast. Pau de queijo, literally cheese bread. This is what a Starbucks kiosk looks like. I'm not getting anything, I just wanted to show you. I am fascinated by this, international varieties of Starbucks. And look at all this. So I'm in a shopping centre right now, Iguatemi, I believe is what it's called. Um, you can see Santander building there, that's the actual Santander bank. And Teatro de Santander, which yes, is sponsored by Santander the bank. Where Wicked is, is in this building here. Google Maps had me convinced that the theatre was in this shopping centre, which is why I spent like an hour walking around every one of its four floors yesterday looking for the theatre. I eventually found it. Um, but they have a Barbie Dreamhouse experience here, which sadly is already sold out because it looks very fun. Just a lot of like photo points and installations. Now I'm a solo traveler. I have no one to take my photos anyway, but I wanted to show you the Barbie Dreamhouse experience. Also, everyone in here, there's so many Barbie collabs happening in all these stores. Barbie. Um, everyone here is wearing pink, not for Glinda, but because of the Barbie Dreamhouse experience. Where's my escalator? This way. Can you tell I've been great at navigating this whole weekend? Leaving the shopping center, and walking left, we're gonna go and find the theater where Wicked is playing. A Santander behind me, actual Santander. I think this is the way I walked yesterday. Yes. So it is signposted here, Teatro Santander, uh, just ahead, but you'd be forgiven for not noticing it from the outside of this building. I might even walk around the perimeter and see if there's any kind of signage. It does tickle me that there's this thing with Wicked worldwide where it's always in slightly odd buildings. The Gershwin Theatre on Broadway it's a very unusual building compared with the other Broadway theatres. It's very much an office building. Um, and the Apollo Victoria used to be a cinema in the West End. So always a bit of a, a sort of not a very classical aesthetic um, ever to the buildings that Wicked is in, except for uh, when it tours and goes to more traditional theatres and possibly in other productions worldwide. I don't know, Hamburg people, Australian people. Uh, let me know what Wicked has been like internationally. I see another sign down at the end there. We're going to take a right down here. As is pointing out the sign, they could do a yellow brick road, couldn't they? That would be novel. If you do happen to be planning a visit to Teatro Santander, I'm walking past a lot of cafe and restaurant options. If you want something really proximal for pre-show dining, that would be my preference, because I don't like to have to travel across. And also, Sao Paulo, very spread out. Ooh, so much green. I just found a green wall. This is great for your wicked photo ops. You come dressed in green, pose with green wall. Nature, even though I look blue. I promise you it's green. More signage here and Wicked can be glimpsed down at the end of this corridor. I found the exterior signage. Look at this, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. There's a van for comparison. It is enormous. There you go. We have the stars of Wicked. I'm gonna let you study this logo. I'm gonna let you work out what's missing 
Players spot the difference. The answer is the little green witch that is normally the dot of the eye. This is a non-replica production, so they can't use the official logo. So on an absolute technicality, we don't have the dot of the eye. But there you go. All the usual names you'd expect of the original creators there. And I'm guessing that's a Portuguese translation of the untold story of the Witches of Oz. But you can see already from this poster, very different costuming. Glinda being back to a pink dress like in the Wizard of Oz film, not the blue dress like in the original Broadway production. I'm very excited. And then this is the signage here, Teatro Santander. I told you, very sponsored, very much sponsored. There's a queue of people behind me here waiting to go into the matinee. It's very dark over there, so I'm filming adjacent to the edge of this. But also, it's kind of like an underground parking situation here, which is almost exactly what the entrance to Wicked at the Gershwin Theatre on Broadway looks like. Crazy coincidence to me, but like, Broadway people, is this whole entrance set up with these columns and the road not staggeringly familiar to you? This is exactly what Wicked is like on Broadway, which is just crazy coincidence. Like I said, it's very dark in here right now, but you can see Wicked posterage. You can see character portraits. A little bit of Dillamond going on. Okay, so I'm in a different park now, the name of which I can't quite remember. I just got an Uber here from where I was. I tried to do a lot of walking around yesterday because I like walking. I walk a lot in London um, and yes, yeah, Sao Paulo is not conducive to walking, but Uber's here, fantastic. Very reliable, uh, very responsive and cheaper than in London. So been Ubering around a bit today, which has been much easier and a little bit less anxiety inducing because like I am still by myself in uh, a country whose language I don't speak. So um, yeah, I don't necessarily want to be walking around and it's a bit like what I've heard about Los Angeles which is just like a lot of it is very residential and everyone drives because it's so spread out so Ubers can recommend uh, but I found this other park which is reminding me of another bit of Central Park with the massive lake which I will show you now so look at this look at this if that is not giving you Central Park but make it Brazil I don't know what is it's very cool there's some sort of event happening over that way because I'm hearing loud music but very popular day in the park here on a lovely sunny Saturday I'll remind you it's the middle of winter allegedly it's also the kind of park where they've got bike lanes people cycle around you can rent bikes and you can rent those little things as well okay a few things to show you here that through the trees there is a planetarium I believe how cool is that and then down this path over this way look at this cool mosaic floor look at this it's huge it's absolutely vast here i am standing in the middle of it pretending i'm the main character and then over here i mean first of all just look at the amazing view it's the trees that give it away i think it's the trees by which i can tell that this is not just a sunny day in a country i'm familiar with We've got birds. Are those black swans? Is that a bunch of black swans or is that another bird that looks like a swan? I think they might be black swans. And I think that's a regular swan. I can't tell. I'm not about to get closer and find out. Because swans are terrifying. But I think those might be swans that don't belong to the British royalty. Because in the UK, all the swans are owned by the king now. So, these are non-royally owned swans. Here's the view on the other side. And oh, there you get closer look at the bird that may or may not be a swan. Jury's out. I don't know who this is, but I like them. They have character. They remind me of the little guys in Mario who actually, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you which video game character this reminds me of because there's every chance it may have an enormous amount of cultural and spiritual significance. I'm going to walk away now. Now, as we hear pop rock covers, in the music festival behind me in the background, this is a statue of Pedro Alvarez Cabral, who was an explorer, nobleman, military commander, who discovered Brazil in the year 1500. Here you can see him gesturing and going, look at that, I shall call it Brazil, and they shall speak Portuguese. Well, call me Mickey Joe statues, because look at this bad boy with the horses and then all these other stone gentlemen. So this is Monumento as Banderas, or Monument to the Flags. Uh, it was made mid 20th century. I've just been doing my reading about it. And it's commemorating Brazil's settlers. 
Look at that! Very impressive. I'll zoom a bit out a bit to give you a sense of scale. Also, lurking in the background there, doesn't that very much look like... Is it the Washington Monument in the US that I'm thinking of? Pointy chap back there on the horizon. So I've had a lot of outdoor time. I'm quite warm. I've seen some epic parkness, some lovely views. I'm enjoying the statues. I want to get more art and culture. And there is meant to be a great art museum that I was told about yesterday. So I want to get an Uber. I don't know if you can see the traffic confusion surrounding me. I'm not sure where is the best place to get an Uber. I'm just going to try and walk to somewhere that's a more obvious pickup location and then maybe we'll go to a museum. Let's try that. That will be my next stop of the day. I'm having a lovely day today just exploring and sightseeing. So this is the very striking Sao Paulo Museum of Art. And then behind me, we have an equally striking view. And look at that, a little slice of Sao Paulo. So I Ubered here for the museum, but their free admission day is Tuesday. It's a Saturday today. And I don't mind paying to go and it's not expensive, but I kind of want to save what little cash I have for the inevitable Wicked merch I'm going to buy. And also, I just don't think I'd be in here long enough to justify it and if I was paying admission to feel like I'd want to then go and like see a bunch of stuff and I'm gonna keep moving I want to walk around for a bit um, because it's not too far it's only a half hour walk to the theatre where the Lion King is playing which I'm not gonna see while I'm here but I kind of want to see the theatre it's in so let's go find the Lion King in Brazil and here we are 28 minute walk later and this is the Teatro Renault Renault like the car where the Lion King is currently playing in Portuguese O Rei Leal possibly. Maybe I've pronounced it anything like how it's meant to be pronounced, but there you go. I'm developing a habit for collecting um, walking past the Lion King in different countries. I've seen it in France without actually seeing the show and now I'm seeing it in Brazil without actually seeing the show. I would see it, but it's very sold out, it's selling very well. And why would it not be? It's the Lion King. You love it in any language. Okay, this is clearly just a thing here, but I was joking a minute ago. I need to show you what I've just seen. So you have the theatre here, and then to the right you have this other building where people are entering. I don't know how that works, but look at the sign. It is literally, bus, bus. It is literally the Renault Theatre, sponsored by the actual Renault car company. I can't, I can't with this. I was hearing last night, I was being told by the producers of Wicked, that the way that shows are financed here works very differently to how it does in the rest of the world. And evidently, the way that theatres are financed also works very differently. And this the corporate sponsorship of theatre buildings, can you imagine in the UK, like in place of Theatre Royal Drury Lane, having like the Krispy Kreme Theatre or like the Tesco Theatre, like whatever it may be. I, I think it's hilarious. I bring you more striking views across large sections of road. I'm on this very interesting little interchange. I was going to get an Uber back to the hotel, but then I spotted that. I want to know what that is, so I'm walking towards it. Oh, 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 oh. Again, the trees somewhat ruin the illusion there. No, it is not Notre Dame. It is the Metropolitan Cathedral of Sao Paulo. And you've got this nice little tree-lined area out the front, leading onwards, this way. Now, if theatrical architecture is what you're after, this is the one right here. This is the Sao Paulo Municipal Theatre. Look at her. Beautiful building. There you go. Okay, so I was going to vlog while I was getting ready to come to Wicked. I'm ready. I'm wearing green. You'll see more of it later. I ironed this shirt. I'm telling you that because if my mother watches this, she won't believe me. But I did. I did. I used a Brazilian iron. It happened. If you're wondering why I'm pink, it's because I'm at my dinner location pre-show. This is a Burger King, everybody. But it's a Burger King that has been Barbie-fied in honor of the Barbie movie. And they're doing a Barbie burger at Burger King. It has a pink sauce. I'm all about this. I was gonna get one from the Burger King in the food court that's in the shopping center next to Wicked. And then I found out about this place and I was like, I have to get the pink burger from the pink Burger King. It's very, I'm dressed like Alphaba, but I'm eating like Glinda. That's what's happening this evening. Let me show you some more of these details because I can't with this. Okay, so big picture. It is a whole pink Burger King with a bit of a Barbie logo at the top there. But then also, little details as well as all of this pink lighting. Look at the lights. Look at the tassels. I can't. I can't. People are standing here just to take photos and why wouldn't you? It's a pink Burger King. Oh boy! There were a lot of very hungry, very pink people in that restaurant, but I got the Barbie burger. I'm a little bit short on time still, so I'm walking over to Teatro Santander 
uh, for Wicked, but I will attempt to show you this burger and I will attempt to eat this burger while walking over there. We are multitasking this evening, people. Okay, cute pink packaging. Here we go, lovely. And you can see here, this is the pink sauce. I think it's like a smoky, it's something. Something's what it is. And I'm hoping, get ready for it, that pink goes good with beef. Eh? Eh? I'm late for the theatre, I have to go. I realise I never actually told you how the Barbie burger was. It just tasted like a normal burger with a little bit more of a flavour kick, but I like a Burger King burger, so it was decent. I enjoyed the Barbie burger. I kind of have no concept of what I paid for it because the conversion was still boggling my mind at that point a little bit, but I managed to find time to eat before the show, which I wasn't sure was going to happen, so that was a yay. So then it was time for me to get ready to go and see the show. I was told to get there early so that I could have the opportunity to be taken backstage, to be walked across the stage and shown the set pieces, the props, the costumes, the wigs, and meet a couple of the cast members as well, which is exactly what I got to do. Obviously there's no video footage of any of that because I'm going in and out of dressing rooms and backstage spaces. This was also the penultimate day of performances, so there was a lovely energy backstage between the cast and the crew. The cast were all presenting awards that they had made up and assigned to each other. It was just a really lovely atmosphere. And I got to meet Mira and Fabi, who play Alpha and Glinda in the show. They were both so lovely, so charming, and this was before they were performing, so I was very conscious that I didn't want to intrude or interfere with their process, but they were so welcoming and so willing to chat with me, and I really appreciated that. And then it was time for me to go back upstairs and show you you everything that was going on in this theatre. Crowds are on their way in but you can see out into where we were earlier today you can see now lit up a little bit more with all those character portraits as people are arriving for Wicked. This is what the foyer looks like if anyone is curious. There you go, Teatro Santander. The all-important branding. I've learned so much about how Brazilian theatre works in this short weekend. One short weekend you might say and then spoilers we have the trailer for the show, a little bit of EPK footage to get people in that wicked mood. Notice no green witch dot on the eye. Okay, this is my favorite thing. You've heard of themed drinks. Get ready for themed food. We have wicked brownies, they're pink and green. We have witch's fingers. I can't with these. Would you eat witch's fingers? I mean, I would. I'm sort of perversely curious. We've got empanadas down here. And we've got whatever this is. I'm fascinated. And then the popcorn. Look at the popcorn. Two different kinds of green popcorn. Sort of a deeper green, sort of a teal. I don't know what is making the popcorn those colours or if it has a flavour. But I'm already excited just because it's green. And that's not all. We also have Glinda cheesecake. Get ready for this. Look at that. Look at the Glinda cheesecake. My goodness, that looks delicious. But not to be left out, even more green things. Wicked cookies! Wicked cookies. My goodness. I mean, the idea's been there the whole time. It took Brazil to think of wicked cookies. We have a green drink, of course, obligatory. And then a green cheesecake option as well. Wow, you can eat well at Wicked, I'm telling you with so many themed foods. As you will not be surprised to hear, there's a bit of a queue at the merch stand, but I'll show you some of the things. You may be taken aback by the prices. You have to divide roughly by five, like I told you before. So this is uh, somewhere between 20 and 25 in English money, but we have this T-shirt with the little flying monkey insignia. It being the end of the run, they have sold out of some merch items, but we still have a souvenir brochure you can see over there. We have these cool Defying Gravity caps. Those are very cute and very green. Through here you can see more pages of the souvenir brochure going on there. And then these! I need you to see these because look, the little Alpha Burr and Glinda sort of pseudo-pop vinyl-esque little statuettes based on their appearance here in the Sao Paulo production. Look at those. And then we have a mug for good measure. A nice green Wicked mug up there above it. I love it. Photo spot here to the left of the merch booth. Shiz University. You can pretend you're graduating in something magical if you like. Another photo spot here. This is Glinda's bubble. If I can get my camera to zoom out properly. Yes. You too can sit in Glinda's bubble as it appears in the Sao Paulo production. Okie dokie. I am in H1 everybody, which I'm told is a very good seat. This is my view of the set. That is a dragon's face you're seeing there with the eyes. I think he's smiling at me. But this is the set design of this non-replica production of Wicked. Similarities, differences, you can see this is like a dragon's wing kind of a canvas. So we don't have the big time dragon clock up the top. We do have lots of animal cages all around the facade. 
I'm very much looking forward to seeing the show. I'm a bit speechless right now, so I'm just going to sit back and watch the damn thing. Oh my god, you're going to have to wait for me to tell you about it on the full video, but the way that Defying Gravity just happened, it was so like, oh okay, I've seen online, I know how they do this, and they did it, and there's so many other elements to it that I didn't know about. My, oh my god, I'm just, I'm going to sit here and recover for a minute because, wow. So watching this video, you can see the excitement on my face, but I want to put just a couple of clips in here to give you a sense of what this production is like, to try and explain the wonder of my reaction. So we're in the interval now. I think they still say interval here. This is something that sounded like interval rather than intermission. Uh, but I just wanted to show you some of this theatre. Um, so you can see going back around there, multiple levels, multiple tiers. Uh, we've got some disability spaces on the row in front. This is kind of like a halfway point through the stalls. This is row H. I'm in H1. How one is in the middle, I don't quite understand, but we'll go with it. It says wicked on the backs of all of the chairs. There you go, there you go. Very, uh, very much a new style auditorium. You can see lots of rigging above. Oh, this is an understudy announcement. I'll tell you about this later.
so it's after the show. What's happening here is these are uh, fans of the show who are getting to have pictures with the whole cast as part of a loyalty program that I'm going to tell you more about, but it's just amazing. How great is this? I'm back in the hotel. This evening has been such a whirlwind of so many things happening, so many things I need to tell you, so many things I need to show you. I have merch. I never showed you my wicked outfit. I'm going to show you in the bathroom mirror because that's that's where the lighting is at the moment. Though I now look very pale. It's fine. It's fine. This is... Hold on. This is the wicked outfit. I promise it's green. And this shirt... You see, okay, the problem with this shirt, it's lovely, and I ironed it, but you sit in it and immediately it creases. But it was ironed. I promise I'm going to give myself more lighting. Look at that, there we go. Shacket that I've stolen from Aaron because I like it and it keeps me warm. And yes, it's like a comfortable, like a smart jogger. This is not my smartest version of having an outfit to go see Wicked, but this is like going to Brazil at short notice and finding outfits that work on a flight and at the theater. So Wicked outfit. Little bit green, little bit fancy. I'm now going out, but I'm gonna give you the full recap of tonight, tomorrow morning. And then it was time for me to go home. I went out with the production team after the show, had a great time, drank more caparinhas, maybe had a little bit too much cachaça, maybe my last day in Sao Paulo was a little bit of a write-off because I was just trying to recover from that. I'm actually about to leave for my flight. Whatever plans I had for today were very much written off by the eventful night that I had last night. We didn't end up going to a samba bar, but we went to a cachaça bar, which is a type of spirit um, that is no longer my friend. And uh, then we went to what I assume was a gay bar afterwards because there was a whole Barbie dance party on stage and it was like in an old cinema. But yes, yeah, so it was like a, a club that had like a dress circle or a mezzanine in it, which I thought was fun because it used to be a cinema. Had a great time feeling the effects of that today, but on my way to go and start a 14 hour plane journey home via a layover in Madrid. There's so much that I want to tell you about this experience and about the show that I will tell you when I am back home, but it's been an incredible, amazing, thrillifying weekend traveling to Sao Paulo, Brazil to see Wicked. A couple more things I need to tell you. So at the end of the show, they had the opportunity for fans who had seen it a whole bunch of times to go and have photos taken on stage with members of the cast because they have this amazing loyalty scheme. So you see the show a few times and you get like a signed poster. You see it a few more times and you get to do things like have one-on-one -on -one photos taken with different cast members in costume, which I think makes it better than Stage Door. It's like a professionally done photo in a proper location. It's like a theme park character meet experience. You see the show enough time to get a photo with the whole cast. I got to have a photo taken with the whole cast after the show. I will put it in here. How cool is that? Honestly, I was dying. And I think this goes up to 30 times. If you see the show 30 times, you get presented with a replica broom on stage. This has now made such an impact in the local theatre scene that they've added a joke about this in the Portuguese language production of Something Rotten, which is also playing in Sao Paulo. But I think that's so fantastic. We talk a lot in the theatre industry about involving younger audiences and curating new audiences. And I think this is absolutely the way to do it. We have people in the West End and on Broadway who see the shows that many times just to see the shows. If there was some kind of a loyalty scheme where they engage with fans, where they reward fans, where they provide those kind of opportunities in a way that is managed and is safer for performers, I think it's terrific, honestly. Very quickly, I know this has been a long video, I want to show you some of the merch that I brought back with me. So I did get one of these Defying Gravity Wicked Hats. I kind of wish it said Brazil on it somewhere, but I will know and I will spend the rest of my life telling people, oh, it's from Wicked Brazil. I also got this little Alphaba statuette, if she will come into focus. There you go. I love it because it's based on the design of her character in this specific version of the show. We've got the sheer one sleeve, very Janet Jackson style that she has on her costume there, but not only that, I also got the Glinda. It had to be done. When else am I going to be in Brazil? So cool. Look at this. And again, completely distinctive to the Brazilian non-replica production design that they have. There you go. They can be friends. Thrilled for them. Uh, so I'm going to have to find a place for them to live. I also have a program from the show and the souvenir brochure that I was showing you pictures from, which has some beautiful double page spreads just like this one let me see if i can find the defying gravity moment there it is 
There it is. Defying gravity. There she is, mid-flight. The iconic moment from this production. Absolutely the most memorable part. But to hear more about it, you're going to have to wait for my review, which hopefully you should be seeing very shortly. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel, make sure you have notifications turned on. I have filmed my review, it is being edited, it is coming to you as soon as possible. Make sure you don't miss it. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Thank you, thank you, thank you again to the producers of Wicked, who valued my review video enough to fly me down to their country to come and see the show. I will never forget this experience. This was somewhere I never thought I would go in my life to see theatre, just because I'm not that much of a brave traveller, but I had such a wonderful and unforgettable time there. I would absolutely go back to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and see more musicals. Also, because it seems like they're doing really exciting stuff down there, and they're really building a new theatre community in this other part of the world. So I think all eyes should be turned towards Sao Paulo, Brazil to see the exciting work they are doing. For now, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Like I said, make sure to subscribe, notifications on so you don't miss my Wicked review, and I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>